Hey, it's John McBride, RMUS, VP of Technology, and we've got some really fantastic stuff coming out from Autel. But first, I just wanted to introduce Matt Harold here, who is basically sales awesomeness. I certainly try. <laughs> yeah. Commercial and enterprise sales manager for Autel. Yeah, and and as far as you doing all of this in the world of drone, I know you've been around the the gambit for a while. You know, you've gotten into the Autel stuff. What what kind of brought you into this spot of just being like? let's come in with Autel and kind of get going with these guys. Well, I was looking for somebody out there that has a lineup of drones that were useful for everybody. We've got everything from your prosumer users to your commercial and enterprise, mm -hmm. and we've got the full lineup of drones to make that possible. Yeah, so I mean, you've, I know you guys have come up with a lot of fancy stuff as far as the Autel Evo line and being able to do a lot of specialty things that other manufacturers don't do. Um, but just kind of talking briefly about the lineup here. So we've yeah. got the, the 6K uh, unit. More your mapping drone. Mapping drone, you know, I mean, it kind of... Your one-inch sensor, you, it, it crosses over into all sorts of different Excellent. Fields, so, so, and you know, and then this comes, is, this is coming with a GPC case, basically, or GPC, GPC at least supported case, Correct. if you want to call that. So. Yep. Uh, in here we have as well the Fox Fury lighting, yep. uh, another company that you guys have been working along with, and I know you guys have they, they have another unit that they use as a dropping system. Can you talk a that little bit about correct. that? That is correct. That's the uh, D100 Exolander. Mm -hmm. Comes with an even more intense uh, spotlight package and a dropping system. Mm -hmm. Perfect for our first responders that need that sort of. And good for the whole lineup. Correct. Yeah, it works on the Evo platform, the Evo 2 platform itself is the same body it's just the payload that changes on excellent them. so yeah they're, it's pretty much universal so we, so then we have the dual i mean Correct. the dual is, is is specialized by itself FLIR sensor FLIR sensor the highest uh 640 over what is it 512 uh, 512 uh -huh. sensor so it's basically the most the best sensor you can get non-military grade basically yeah. sure in the US, so yeah and it, i know there's been a lot of guys out there doing fantastic stuff with this thing you know, without as far a doubt as, yeah especially public safety guys correct some level of inspection but not really the inspection side of things where you would be radiometric and stuff but not relative inspections you the radiometric version of the FLIR camera is coming yeah. it is uh, supposed to be here sooner rather than later excellent is all i'll say well i wanted to talk about one more other item in your guys's ecosystem called the live deck um this this is a really fantastic um, product we've 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 been nothing but impressed by it you know one of the most often things we get requested by any agency is being able to yep. share that feed this basically gives you a live feed it sees exactly what the camera is seeing you don't have to be connected to the controller you don't have to be tethered to anything it's getting a the second feed directly into the live deck mm -hmm. that you can display on a multitude of different screens yeah or, yeah you've got hdmi you've got usb yep. you've got you so know. perfect to put in your command center yeah and there you go you've Excellent. got you've got live live feed of what the bird is seeing yeah so. and although you can do we talked about being able to, to change these payloads a huge money saver wouldn't you think as far as like i have my certainly my you don't have to buy to... a whole new drone say you need the 6k for your out mapping whatever mm -hmm. and then your swat team needs a a thermal camera it is four screws and a ribbon pin and you can swap payloads yeah no problem pretty takes like, simple takes like three minutes all right and then the, the last one we have here is the 640t so what, so this is our another our another thermal solution with the infrared so it's a the chinese version of our dual camera yeah so it comes in at a little bit better price point Probably a big one being uh, price point being price probably point most is... most exciting about it. it's a lot less. You know, not to say yep. we throw a FLIR sticker on stuff, but we throw a FLIR sticker on stuff. It's a little bit more expensive. It's exactly the truth. Yeah, so. okay. yep. <laughs> we're honest. Just, being honest. Just gonna so, just so gonna all, say. all of the normal stuff that comes Correct. with it's it. Correct. It's just basically the same kit all the way across the board. Yeah. So. so we have this easy compatibility between all of these three airframes, but you know the one thing that we're really excited about and which you guys had brought out to us here was the dragonfish so correct you know so let's go ahead and walk on over here take a look at that now i know you know as far as vtol capability there's a whole lot of them out here in the in yeah, the world this I mean, one's a little different than most um for one the body is a lot more rugged than most of your basic foam mm -hmm. um it has swappable payloads you're looking at roughly a two hour flight time um, and you've got the ease of use of the VTOL, vertical takeoff and landing. Yeah. You've got the hovering capability, loitering, that it can basically keep an eye on 
a suspect, a vehicle, whatever it may be. Specialized use cases here. It's very, very specialized use cases. But, it's, but it's not a highly recommended mapping system. It's not because, because the payloads you don't really are the, like super yeah, high end megapixel, exactly. whatever. It's, you know, 40 times zoom, whatever it may be. Right. Um, it's more of a security. I'll let you hold that. This is the smart controller for the Dragonfish, mm -hmm. 9.7 inch screen, 1,000 nits, you can see it in anything. Mm -hmm. Very easy uh, user interface, set up your mission. For the most part, when you're flying the Dragonfish, it's automated. You are telling it to go up, you want it to scan this, you know, 30 acres right here and keep an eye out for suspicious behavior, whatever it may be, trespassing, mm -hmm. whatever, and it does it all. Well, we've got the we've got the battery system here. So basically, it runs two batteries. Correct. Uh, these are uh, usually done in pairs. We highly recommend that to make sure Keep that your pairs, your yes. cycles are the same. Yep. So it's got two batteries that it runs, um, and it has its own power systems. Uh, you know, checking their their voltage just like any other type of battery. So yep. And then uh, and your ease of putting this thing together, it's about as simple as could be. Yeah. So, so let's take a little bit closer look at that. And I mean, what we've got the batteries already installed in their cavities. Uh, we do have two propellers up here on the main body, uh, longitudinal. Then we have the RTK. Basically, we'll call it the RTK yep. because you do have a ground station in which is being used to, to more as a range extender than range an, extender than an RTK system. So it's so not, it's. In essence, it's still kind of RTK, it, but it's not in the manner of like mapping RTK. Correct. It's not yeah. more for accuracy, it's more for extending the range when yeah. necessary. Obviously. Excellent. Well, very unique design here. So I just wanted to look at the wing here. So we don't have, you know, the typical flight controllers that we normally see in a VTOL. So we don't have ailerons mm -hmm. moving, but we have this portion that moves that both works in taking off. Yep. Then as we are moving through the air, there might be a little bit of change Correct. here to get your roll and, and whatnot. A fastening system that is very unique, you know, that I've not seen before. So uh, we'll watch that be yeah. put on real quick. So just by stabilizing, lining up our holes here, lifting our, our thing and getting our pins right. And it's got a little buckle in there, I notice it's really kind of cool. So. Push it in there, get the buckle, and snap it on. Very clean. Close it up. And there you go. And there you go. Now, now I know that the on the back end here, we do have a way to get that apart. Yeah. So press a button yeah, and that comes just apart. But top and bottom release. And, and she comes apart. There you go. Simple and easy. So fairly easy. I mean, yep. we, you know, as far as the case goes and all of the components getting back inside, uh, transporting this thing isn't that bad either. It's not you that know, bad. Because it, it does kind of close you up into actually, a small space. You can actually take it on the plane with you. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's a huge thing for a lot of a lot of people that need yep. to get it in places. So you did talk about again not much being a mapping system. Yeah, more security, uh border shore patrol, that sort of thing. That is more the intended use case for yeah. this. Perfect. Well, Man, you guys are just doing great things. Yeah. Should we uh, basically do a takeoff and a landing, maybe do a UI check to see some of the neat features Certainly. about it, you know? Yeah. So let's go ahead and get it up in the air. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm super excited about it just to see how that will work. I'll right. let you do it. You, you're the man. We'll see how man. that goes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's get it up in the air. Cool. Okay, Matt, so we got it up in the air. She's cruising around doing her mission right now, something that we already set. I know that, you know, as far as a VTOL goes, we've got to get it up in the air. She then has to kind of do this circling, circling to altitude. Yep. Circling to altitude. We set this to saves three. Saves battery life. Yeah, and, certainly yeah. saves battery life. But I did notice also that she's a pretty powerful in the quad configuration. So most of the time, VTOLs struggle with really trying to fly yeah, well. It seems to transition flawlessly. It's uh -huh. very effortless. At, like you said, it's circling now, getting up to altitude. It could just take off and go to the 300 and whatever feet we're going to. But you would burn a lot of the battery that mm -hmm. way. So that's what it's doing right now. Yeah, so we can see our ground speed at 50 miles so or so. Uh, yep. And then and then, and then air speed, we have an AGL reporting back as well as my MSL, uh -huh. which is pretty accurate here. When it's so. flying uh, in the airplane setting, it has to go, I believe it's 38 miles an hour. Mm. So that's the minimum it goes. Uh, I'm gonna open up the camera here and I think we'll be able to do a tracking and I'm just going to go ahead and click a point 
So it successfully starts tracking, so it's going to be looking at something in a space. So she's holding in this area. We can see that GPS point right there that she's going to be holding in basically a space, and then I can track or track something in the middle of that. Yep. And that's kind of the general idea. So let me see if I can find something to track. I'm going to come into the wide view. Um, we're going to try and see if we can track something. So if that's the item that we want to track, let's see if we can get that back around here. Get on over here. There we go. Let's, let's click over here. And we do notice that, like I said, it doesn't have quite a full, like, c continuous round in a circle, uh, you know, thing. We do hit a hard point there, right? Yeah, correct. So let's see if we can get... Kind of parameter of where we wanted to keep it in. So. Yeah. Let's go ahead and have our subject go hang out there on the, on the tarmac for just a second. And what I'll do is just kind of keep moving the the drone around in this space to kind of see if I can get tracking on our on our area. So I'm just clicking on, basically the camera is clicking and readjusting yep. the circle, you know. And as I get a little bit closer, I'm gonna to try to make a box here, but I'm gonna increase my zoom a little bit on my zoom camera, sorry. There you go. And then I'm gonna track my guy. And that's what I wanna track. And even if he runs really fast, let's see if we can keep on him. Let's see. Stay on that. Let's see. Oh, this is definitely user error here on my end. <laughs> there we go. So it does a pretty good job even yep. just trying to hang on to something for a bit, managing even its flight. You can see things get in the way of the camera as well. We can zoom in and out on that subject if we need to in the dynamic tracking. Yep. But, you know, keeping our, di I can't even hear it. Can you even hear it? Um, no. Yeah, pretty quiet. Just cruising around out there, not even noticing. I bet the, the subject wouldn't even notice. He would have no idea. Yeah. So let's jump back over to the map view and you can see our, how our movement is moving through that space. And you then back over to that. Of the tracking still going on. Mm-hmm. So let's go ahead and stop that and let it uh, kind of finish its mission that it's doing now. So we'll just come back into the mission mode here. And I notice, you know, on the UI here, we have like a lot of, you know, buttons and things to push. We can cycle, you know, start, start and stop or taking pictures. We can basically run, you know, return to home if we needed to. So even as it's going back and continuing its mission back to its normal spot. Yeah, there we go. Yep. So if we stop our, our, our flight here, let's see if we can get into that. Okay, then from here in this transition, even though we're done tracking, we're done doing our mission, now we've got this another circular pattern happening, Coming right? Coming back now. down to altitude, basically. Yeah, so as we watch our altitude over here on the bottom right, we can see it dropping in altitude, saving again that battery as you were yep. talking about. So as we come around in that circle and then finally it will transition into full drone mode and then make its yep. landing. Okay, so just a couple of other things to note is, you know, on here is that we have a, a manual or auto button here yep. as you're doing your thing. So we just flip that over to manual. This would if control. That necessary. Yeah, yeah, if that is necessary, which I've already done today, yes. which is really awesome to fly around just in, in cruiser speed being an RC guy that I am. So we just have a little, little forward flight, meaning that we want to keep the speed moving yep. forward. We have a roll effect and then an altitude change on our left stick. But if we do want to go into full transition into, into, in, in manual, we're going to pull that, that back. She makes a full quad yep, transition. It basically comes to a stop. The, wi the wings turn up. And, and I noticed the... how stable that is yep. during that time as well. So super stable uh, as far as coming into the drone side. So here she is coming into land. She's going to make her transition. She's stopping now. Yeah. A good rotation, you know, that I did notice like uh, in the windy areas. I mean, again, very challenging for VTOL in the wind, uh, in which this one does a much, seems to do a pretty good job in the wind. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. Remain stable the entire time. Yeah.
And mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. Nothing but impressive. That's all I can say right there. We're so, uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and, and kind of do, do a wrap up here of talking about this thing and, and uh, pretty much what it is and what, what I think we're, we're going to see out there. So. so that was a pretty awesome flight demonstration, my man. I, yeah. mean, I mean, this is nothing but impressive. I can't say any more about it. I yeah. mean, uh, I've tested a lot of machines out there. You, you know I have. Definitely. And, yeah. and this one just blows my mind. I, we're very excited for it. I'm, yeah. I'm ready to get it out there with your help. Well, yep. just one last thing I wanted to mention is yep. your guys' U.S. support here. You know, mm -hmm. I know that, you know, it's taken a little while to kind of get everybody to get familiar with the Auto brand, what it means, what yep. it is. But, you know, you guys have got We've got our full sales support. team here in the U.S. and our customer service. So uh -huh. it's all located here in the U.S. to try to help give that top-notch service. Absolutely. And, yep. a, and a high expectation when you're talking about Definitely. spending the amount of monies that Without people do. Without a doubt. Do. It's going to be expected. So, so. A lot, I think a lot of people, a lot of manufacturers should learn from that just by itself, my right. man. <laughs> we're, we're hoping it works. So. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Well, thank you for right. joining me thanks today. Thanks for your time today. And thanks, everybody, for uh, kind of hanging out with us. All and, right. And Matt as well, and Autel, and seeing this fantastic ship called the Dragonfish. All right. Thank you.